Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I just have a couple things really strongly on my heart that I want to share. Um, first of all, if you have clicked onto this video and you're struggling within yourself about what my let's call it credentials are, or my authority, what authority I have to be coming on here claiming that I have a word from the Lord. If you're thinking that inside of your heart from, you know, the most kindest, sweetest place in my spirit I can find, I encourage you to pause this video to get before our Father in heaven and ask Him. Ask Him what authority I have. Ask Him what my credentials are because Without it, you will not fully receive what the Lord is trying to do here, okay? For the rest of us, I'm going to give you the word that the Lord gave me last night. It was, it was a word that He gave me specifically for a certain person in a certain situation that I was praying about. And then we are going to do some heart work, and we're going to watch how God takes that one word and multiplies it like he did the the five loaves and the two fish and fed thousands okay and then at the end of this I will share with you who that word was for okay and I have my reasons for doing it in that order I have my orders for doing it in that order okay so here's what the Lord said to me um, this morning early this morning our uh, one of our smoke detectors decided it was losing its battery power as they do in the middle of the night always for some reason um, and I started to look at that because I tried to go back to sleep and it was very difficult to go back to sleep and I started to look at it like it was a like a curse you know like oh man someone's you know attacking me I could be getting another hour and a half of sleep before I have to get up and then I said no since I can't sleep I'm going to use this as an extra prayer time to pray for some things that need pray for prayed for okay so I begin to pray over a certain situation. And I'll tell you at the end what it was about. And this is what the Lord said, okay? He said, you will search for truth and not find it because you have blinded the eyes of many. Okay, now that word wasn't for me. It was for a person and a situation that I was praying over. However, I think a lot of times as Christians, we, we're so concerned about the Lord correcting our brother or our sister that we never hear the correction that he is trying to give us. And so he wants us to look into our hearts and ask ourselves, is that word for us? Okay. Is it something we can apply to our lives? Because we do not want to be guilty of concealing the truth, intentionally deceiving because we will reap what we sow. That's what the Bible says. God is not mocked. We will reap whatever we sow, okay? Yes, he's gracious. Yes, he's forgiving. But if we are intentionally and willfully ignorant and sowing evil and sowing corruption, we will reap corruption and evil, okay? And so the Lord is mm -hmm. saying, you will seek truth and you will not find it because you have blinded the eyes of many, okay? Here's some reasons why we would willingly intentionally deceive our brothers and sisters around us. One, we don't want to look like an idiot. We don't want to look wrong, right? Maybe we said some things, believed some things, found out we were wrong. And we don't want our brother or our sister to know we were wrong. That's pride, okay? That is not a reason for you to keep back the truth from somebody or something in a situation, to become a false witness, to partner with the enemy, okay? Two, because we have prejudices, right? Maybe we have bitterness, um, self-seeking or envy or hatefulness towards a person, a specific race, a political party. Um, I don't know, fill in the blank, but whatever that is, that reason could possibly be why you will not bear witness to the truth to your brothers and sisters around you while you keep covering it up. I don't like that person. I don't want that person to win. I don't feel like X, Y, Z is right. Well, it doesn't matter what we feel like. Does it line up biblically? Okay. Do not cover, lie, or boast 
do not cover or boast or lie against the truth, okay? Now, the Word of God says that when we have bitterness and envy and self-seeking, we lie against the truth, okay? So we are to check our hearts from those things. Have I done this? In any area, this is big or small, okay? The, the scale that the Lord spoke over this person is huge. It is huge because it involves a lot of pieces. It involves a lot of people, okay? But can we use this on a, on a smaller scale on a smaller scale still and ask ourselves, am I guilty of this? Do I have prejudices in my heart that have kept me um, from telling the truth and have caused me to conceal it, okay? Or because I don't want to look like an idiot, okay? I don't want people to know I was wrong. So what? We've all been wrong many times. That's pride. Get over it. Tell the truth. Another reason, a very, 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 <laughs> a very popular strategy of the enemy is we are given incentive to lie against the truth, okay? And we see that in Judas, right? Judas was given incentive. The, the scribes and the Pharisees and, and the religious leaders wanted the truth, because Jesus is the truth, wanted the truth shut up so much that they paid someone to turn him into him so that they could kill him, okay? Judas took the incentive. Let us not be that way. Let us not be that way. We may just be wanting the incentive while someone else has this hatred and has an agenda, okay? But we have become partners with that agenda. We have become partners with that evil if we take that incentive. Could be anything. Incentive goes a long way. The enemy's been doing it for ages, right? No man is tempted unless he's drawn away by his own lust and enticed. He knows what gets us. He knows what incentive to offer. To Judas, it was cash. To someone else, who knows what it is, what the incentive is, okay? To lie against the truth. And when I say truth, I am not just talking about the gospel. While yes, that is the truth, the truth, okay? And all other truths are surrounded by it. That is not the only truth I'm talking about. So don't be just thinking gospel. Be thinking truth in general, okay? And another one, and I'm sure there's thousands of reasons, okay? But the last one that I have here is uh, we're afraid of suffering, okay? So we may not tell the truth and we'll conceal the truth because we're afraid of suffering. We are afraid of what our brothers and sisters in the world might do or say to us. And I'm not just talking about the gospel. I'm talking about standing up for what's right, period. But all in all, if you've done any of those things, if any of those things have been the reason you're like, well, I just hate that person. And I just don't like it when they win. Or I just don't. That's justifying, okay? There is no such thing as a white lie. They are all lies, every single one of them. And there, there is no justification for it. A lie is a lie, okay? The Bible says that whatever comes out of our mouth is our God, in other words, right? Whatever our heart is full of is what comes out of our mouth, okay? And so if our heart is full of, of sexual sin, guess what's coming out of our mouth? If our heart is full and loves money, guess what's coming out of our mouth, okay? And if our heart is full of lies, guess what's coming out of our mouth? And why would our heart be full of lies? Because it's full of Satan. It's full of evil, it's full of darkness. Okay? Because he is the father of all lies. That's what the scripture tells us. He, that means he gave birth. He created lies. He's the father of all lies. Okay? And when I got here, when the Lord was downloading this, he said, and some are living a lie on their own. <laughs> They've been lying to themselves every single day, living their own lie. Okay? Living a lie, lying to themselves about something. And do you want to know what the number one thing was that came to my mind? And I know people are going to hate this when I say it, but it's the truth. Homosexuality. Lying to yourself every day that you are something that you are not. God can help you with that. God can help you. He can instill that brand new truth inside of you once more. Do not lie to yourself any longer. 
the more we lie to ourselves, we build up a wax in our ears. We build up scales on our eyes. We build up callousness around our hearts and it is hard to hear, see, and receive truth. And then God has to hand us over to our lie because he can no longer get through those layers to us because we don't want to. We've purposely built those things. And so he says, fine, that's what you want. That's what you'll get. Okay? And it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Something else that he said about concealing the truth is this. To cover the truth, to, deli- to, to deliberately conceal the truth in any matter, is to deliberately fight against God. He is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are for, if you're not for me, you're against me. And so if you are not for the truth, you are against it. And being against the truth is being against God, right? The Bible says that, that to, be, to, make, to make friends with this world is to be an enemy, to become an enemy of God, okay? So we have to decide who is our God? Who, who do we serve? Who are we, ser- who are we serving? And trust me, you do not want to be an enemy of God, okay? Once again, the Bible says it is a fearful thing. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We do not want to choose the world over him and become friends with the world and forsake our friendship with God and become his enemy. He says, hold fast to your confession of hope without wavering. He says, return to me. And do not make friendship with the lie or the liar. Now, here's who that message was for. And the reason I tell you last is this. The Bible says we cannot get the speck out of our brother's eye until we have removed the log from our own. Okay? And so had I have told you this earlier, some of you probably would have just stopped the video, never watched the rest, and never got the log out of your own eye. And so I pray that you would take the log out of your eye so that you can remove the speck of sawdust from your brother's eye, okay? And so if you approach what I'm gonna tell you next with any other heart than I need to get on my knees and pray for this man, you have not done the heart work necessary, okay? Here's what the Lord, here's who the Lord spoke this to my heart for, Mark Zuckerberg. And this is what he says to Mark Zuckerberg. You will seek the truth and you will not find it because you have blinded the eyes of many. And I know that in this time, he is not the only one out there censoring the truth. You want to know where truth is? Look at what is being censored. And I guarantee you'll find it. What is being drowned out, blotted out, deleted, you name it, that is where the truth is. Because no one has ever cared until the truth started coming out. And I know that he's not alone, but it just so happens that he is the one that I was praying for and that was on my heart and that the Lord was talking to me about. Why did the Lord talk to me about it? Because I was praying about it. So you want the Lord to talk to you about it? Pray about it. That's how it works. Okay? So that's what I have to say about that. And I pray that each and every single one of us would dig deep into the motives of our heart and ask ourselves, am I allowing my brother or my sister to be in bondage? Because that's what you're doing. When you tell a lie about a person or you allow someone to believe a lie about a person or a situation because you don't want to look like an idiot for incentive purposes, you have bitterness or hatefulness or prejudiceness towards a a person or a situation or a political party. I don't know, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. So you have those things in your heart and you're harboring the truth or concealing the truth. You are placing your brother or sister in bondage and allowing them to be there so you don't look like an idiot. (laughs) So you can keep hanging on to your prejudices. So you can continue to, to increase your gain for whatever that is, okay? And those things are sick. They're absolutely sick. And they are not godly ways to live. And so each of us need to get inside of ourselves, rid ourselves of any lie that we have given way to, repent, turn from our evil ways, and then release our brother and sisters 
from bondage of whatever lie it is that A, they've got themselves into, B, other people are lying and concealing the truth about, okay? And there is a lot of that going on this day and age. So God bless you guys. I love you. And it is rare for me to come on and speak in this kind of authority. It happens from time to time. I do as the Lord has asked me to do. I mostly enjoy just being a teacher and kind of, you know, peacefully walking through things as I do on my channel. But from time to time, the Lord asks me to come, be firm, to be in authority and to be giving his word in boldness and truth. Okay. With love, with a spirit of love. So, God bless you guys, and I will see you in other videos.